Breaking news now on 1010 Winds. It was about eight hours ago, an airplane slammed into one tower at the World Trade Center. Then about 15 minutes later, another aircraft, also a commercial airliner, both hijacked and both with passengers aboard, slamming into the upper floors. And then after about an hour and a half, one of the towers collapsed and then the other collapsed after that, leaving thousands in the rubble. We don't know any casualty figures at this point. Something we should be learning uh, more about as the day unfolds. A morgue has been set up on the west side. The mayor will have an update for us shortly. We do know that uh, several thousand thousand people have been treated so far and we do know there are some casualties including at least one firefighter who had gone to the world trade center to help rescue and treat other people he was killed when debris started raining down when the towers were collapsing in washington a somewhat similar story where another a third hijacked airliner crashed into part of the pentagon causing casualties the extent of casualties we don't know we know there are some injured people we don't know about fatalities at this point in terms of numbers there was a fourth airplane that was hijacked this one crashed about 80 miles southeast of pittsburgh and uh, all the people aboard that plane, Flight 93 out of Newark, heading to California, to San Francisco, uh, were killed. And there's a man aboard that flight who had a cell phone, at least it's believed to be the case, of listening to the transcripts who said we're being hijacked, we're being hijacked, and then the plane went down. Now, as far as travel around here, the bridges and the roads and the rails and so on, here's the very latest. Here's Matt Ward. Right over to the uh, 1010 Winds Jam, Cam. I'm looking live at the Cross Bronx westbound side. is very crowded coming up and across the uh, Deegan and heading into the George Washington Bridge. The upper level is open. And heading back over to the uh, Jersey side as I uh, look in live. And that's the only Hudson River crossing that is uh, getting through right now. The Holland Lincoln Tunnel is still closed off in each direction. Thrysnake and Whitestone are getting through. The Triborough Bridge is still closed into Manhattan. Midtown Tunnel, Queensboro Bridge shut down into Manhattan but open. Heading back over to Queens. And the Barrazano Bridge is still closed to Brooklyn but open. Getting over to Staten Island. A few transit notes for you. Staten Island Ferry is running outbound service. And there is some other ferry service available leaving town from Pier 11 Wall Street. Also from West 38th Street from East 34th and from Pier A, Battery Park, to New Jersey, Brooklyn, Queens. And we continue to have uh, New Jersey transit uh, slowdowns, although they are operating now on a uh, load-and-go basis out of Penn Station. And you will uh, find those trains on Northeast Carter, North Jersey Coastline, Midtown Direct to Dover, and also on the Raritan line. Metro North and Long on the Railroad still with limited service out of New York City. And I'm Matt Ward, Shadow Traffic on 1010 Winds. And Matt, we'll be back with us in less than 10 minutes with another update. We're going to go to 1010 Winds reporter Glenn Shuck, who's been kind of following the mayor and waiting for the mayor's next briefing. Here's Glenn. And Ralph, we're waiting actually from our information. We were told that briefing would be right about now, but it has been delayed. Mayor Giuliani and Governor Pataki are in regular contact, we're told, with President Bush as to this massive rescue effort and enforcement of security all around New York City. Governor Pataki saying whoever is responsible for this must be punished and appropriately and swiftly. Uh, but clearly, this is an attack upon America, it's an attack upon our freedom and our way of life, and we must retaliate and go after those who perpetuated this heinous crime against the people of America. Again, Ralph, as soon as we know, we will tell you we're waiting for another briefing with the mayor and city officials. The mayor had stopped at St. Vincent's Hospital earlier. We are told he was there for about an hour visiting those who have been wounded and families of some of the dead. And the time again of this briefing has been delayed, but we'll bring it to you as soon as we know. Glenn Shuck, 1010 wins, live in the Lower East Side. And, of course, you have all the other kinds of sources, but the mayor, really the main source for the city to give us some indication of the overall rescue effort and casualty figures as well, because some city workers, police, and firefighters were killed. Mainly people had gone to uh, help rescue others when the first of the planes hit the uh, World Trade Center. Uh, there is a morgue being set up, and um, we just have no indication, but we do know that roughly 50,000 people work in that complex at the World Trade Center, and uh, thousands of others go there every day for business or just passing through to the subways or other, or trying to get to some other place. Winds News Time 504, live continuing coverage here on 1010 Winds, and on the subject of casualties, we've been getting constant updates from Terry Sheridan at St. Vincent's. Terry? Okay, well, here's the latest. Numbers. 297 people have been brought to St. Vincent's. Out of that number, 42 are rescue workers. Now, they, for the most part, have minor injuries, as I was saying before, scratches to the eyes from all the concrete dust in the area. Uh, we do have three deaths. 45 people are in critical condition. Hospital officials say that people have also been brought to, brought to St. Vincent's hospitals on Staten Island, in Queens, and in Brooklyn. They also said that EMS has just informed them that they are starting to dig again at the World Trade Center, so to stand and by, they're going to start bringing in more serious injuries uh, within the next hour. They do have a family center set up. They ask that if you 
Or we're thinking of coming to St. Vincent's to see if you have a family member here. Please don't. They're trying to keep the avenues clear for emergency vehicles. Um, you can call uh, a number that they have set up, which is 212-604-7285. Or you can go to the center, which is at the new school, which is 11th Street, just off 5th Avenue. Terry Sheridan, 1010 Winds, live at St. Vincent's Hospital. And we should also point out, making this rescue effort more dangerous and also occupying the efforts of the firefighters, there apparently are fires at two more buildings at the World Trade Center, uh, number 7 and 5, and the one at 7, at least we believe, and told anyway that the, the gas lines are feeding that fire too. So there's still fire going on down there at that complex. And we're talking now uh, eight hours after the uh, first of the planes hit of, of the uh, at the World Trade Center. Now, uh, we've heard about the worst of human nature, the people who hijacked four airliners and crashed them into the World Trade Center and into the Pentagon and one south of Pittsburgh. But we're also hearing about the best, the people working so very hard to help others, help rescue them and just other volunteers. Let's go live to 1010 Winds reporter Steve Kastenbaum. Well, uh, Ralph, I'm here on the corner of Worth and Lafayette down in lower Manhattan uh, across from the federal court building, and there are dozens upon dozens of volunteers frantically at work here. They are hammering together two-by-fours in plywood, uh, putting together makeshift stretchers that are going to be trucked in by sanitation dump trucks into the disaster area. They're also trucking in volunteers. However, right now, that flow of uh, material and volunteers has come to a stop because the fire department is fearful that number seven World Trade Center is in danger of collapsing. Number seven, one of the buildings still on fire here. The smoke still billowing out from the World Trade Center area across over into Brooklyn can be seen for miles upon miles around. Uh, firefighters who were walking out of there exhausted earlier told me they hadn't even got anywhere near the World remnants of the World Trade Center towers that they were still busy battling the blazes in the buildings surrounding that area. So I would not be surprised if we see these fires burning way into the night. They are definitely, without a doubt, burning out of control. Also, uh, most of these stretchers, uh, I am told, are uh, being prepared uh, for the bodies that they expect to be removed from the rubble. Steve Kastenbaum, 1010 Winds, live in Lower Manhattan. We just got the word to President Bush. That's a Steve Kastenbaum there. You're listening to live continuing coverage on 1010 Winds of the terrorist acts at the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. We're just told President Bush is expected to address the uh, nation this evening. Uh, the president did issue a two-minute statement earlier today. It was taped, and then the president left the location, and then that was given to us. There was concern about his safety, of course, with these terror attacks. But the president had been in Sarasota, then went to a secure base in Louisiana, then another in Nebraska, and we're told he's on the way back to Washington. And as I just said, plans to address us earlier. We heard from Karen Hughes, his communications director, saying that the Secret Service had moved in and uh, secured the safety of the president, the vice president, and others, and also that the FAA has said all flights will be grounded at least until noon tomorrow, and she also pointed out that the military is in high alert. A lot of things are not happening. We've had a lot of closings, a lot of related stories here. Let's get to 1010 Winds reporter Larry Cantor. If you have tickets for a Broadway show, you'll have to exchange them. Broadway will be dark tonight. Metropolitan Museum of Art closed today. Brooklyn Public Library closed up as well. Classes were canceled at St. John's University and Rutgers University and Seton Hall University. The New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, and the American Stock Exchange all closed today and will be closed again tomorrow. Also, the Meadowlands and Monmouth Park horse tracks will close tonight. They live and simulcast racing as well. And then again tomorrow, the Metro Stars Major League Soccer match with Miami has been canceled. It was to take place at Giants Stadium tomorrow. Looking ahead to this weekend, McGuire Air Force Base has already called off its air shows Saturday and Sunday. Ralph? Well, so many, many ramifications. In just a couple of minutes, we'll have another update from uh, Matt Ward on the travel situation, because a lot of you folks are wondering how to get home or get through this area. But the best thing is not to come in Manhattan at this point, because as Larry just indicated, a lot of things are closed up. In just a moment, we'll go back to Doug O'Brien, too, to hear more about what's been going on in Washington, because that city's been pretty well shut down as well. Now, again, we may hear, expect to hear from the president later tonight. At any time now, we expect to hear from Mayor Giuliani, telling about the rescue effort. Uh, the mayor has, of course, already deplored what had happened, but said New Yorkers are hanging tough, but he did talk about losing some firefighters and police officers, too, among the casualties. Uh, Doug O'Brien, what's the latest from uh, Washington and other, uh, other related items? 
Well, as we've been saying, President Bush is on his way back to Washington at this time and where he'll immediately convene with his national security advisors and decide what uh, action to take on this. In the meanwhile, U.S. authorities are saying that they suspect Osama bin Laden is behind today's terrorist attacks. No one's claimed responsibility for that as yet, and there appears to be some debate within the uh, uh, law enforcement uh, world and within the Arab world as to whether or not Bus uh, Osama bin Laden could have, in fact, have carried something like like this out at the Pentagon, which was struck by a, an airliner crashing this morning. Rescue workers have begun bringing victims out. The west side of the building heavily damaged when American Airline Flight 77 crashed into it. The airplane carrying 56 passengers and a crew from Washington's Dulles Airport. The plane was in uh, bound for L.A. Apparently, it made Ohio before it was commandeered and turned around. Part of the Pentagon collapsed in the crash. One of the people on board that we know of was Barbara Olson. She's a former congressional staffer and Republican Party activist. It's also known she called from the plane using her cell phone at least twice. Ralph? That is Doug O'Brien with a, an update on some of the ramifications of this ongoing uh, horrible story. The terror attack at the World Trade Center and the Pentagon and that fourth plane that crashed to southeast of Pittsburgh. Now, back again to Matt Ward, who has another update for us on the, the travel situation. Matt? I've been keeping eyes on some of the bridges and tunnels and no traffic at all on the Manhattan Bridge or any of the Lower East River uh, bridges or the Battery Tunnel for now, although there is some pedestrian traffic still making its way across the Manhattan Bridge upper level as I look in live here. Uh, people walking across that bridge heading back over to Brooklyn that way. You will be able to use the Queensboro Bridge of the Midtown Tunnel back to Queens, but not into Manhattan. And the Triborough Bridge is still reported to be closed off into Manhattan, but the Throgsneck and Whitestone are open. Across the Hudson River, Holland and Lincoln are closed down till further notice in both directions. George Washington Bridge, the upper level is open back to New Jersey. The lower level is uh, closed for now. And the traffic is also blocked off on the Verrazano to Brooklyn, but open getting to Staten Island. And the uh, Gothels, Outerbridge Crossing, Bayonne Bridge are shut down heading to Staten Island. That's causing a lot of traffic on the Jersey side over on 440 as well. Jersey Transit operating out of Penn Station now on a load-and-go basis on the Northeast Carter, North Jersey Coastline, Midtown Direct and Raritan Line. Ferry service available out of town from Pier 11, Wall Street and also from West 38th, East 34th and Pier A, a Battery Park to New Jersey, Brooklyn and Queens. Staten Island Ferry is running some outbound service and limited service on Metro North trains as you try to leave New York City. Of course, all the airports are closed likely until about noon tomorrow and I'm Matt Ward with Shadow Traffic on 1010 Winds. Yes, and when Matt says all airports, we're talking nationwide. The FAA grounding all commercial flights at least until noon tomorrow. There were four commercial uh, planes that were part of this terror act today. All four were hijacked with passengers aboard, two of them slamming into the World Trade Center, another into part of the Pentagon, another crashed in Pennsylvania at a loss of about 200 lives of the passengers on those planes, the passengers and the pilots and the crew members. Some of the injured at the World Trade Center uh, were taken uh, across the river to the Jersey City Medical Center, and there, 1010 Winds reporter. Sandy Klein. Ralph, the first casualties came to the Jersey City Medical Center between 10 and 11, and obviously not only did the ER get into gear, but so did the support staff. And I have with me Lee Bailey. She is the director of social work and case management um, for the medical center, and she has really spent her day counseling the injured. Hi, this is Lee Bailey. Um, we've just, yeah, just spent the entire day trying to help people through the crisis. They need to talk about it. Um, our role here, after the patients are getting through the emergency part of the day, is really to get them um, talking about the issues, t getting them talking about their injuries, what happened. They're talking about horrific things like people jumping out of buildings. Um, Many people in shock, even though they're physically um, okay. We have many. Some of the more traumatized people are the firemen, policemen, and EMS workers from New York City, who I think we have about 30 um, folks over here now. Um, it's just unbelievable. You know, and Ralph Lee was telling me that she's basically going to spend the night here because the irony is that the patients who have been treated and are discharged, there's no way to get them back into New York. I mean, here they are, you know, bandaged and, and, and uh, their wounds treated, and they're sitting around waiting to, to, to you know, not, to, not so much to be released, but to find a way to get back into the city. And obviously that's pretty much impossible at this point. Well, frustrating, but still a miracle for these folks. Oh, too. for sure. And I have to 
tell you, uh, as an aside, the people at this uh, medical center are fabulous, and 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 everybody's just sort of rallied around this uh, this amazing tragedy. And it's I, I I've gotten quite an education as I've watched them go about their business. Yeah, and it's the work quite is, something. And the work is not yet done. No, far from it. Sandy Klein reporting live from the Jersey City Medical Center. We just got the word earlier. Sharon in Israel declaring tomorrow a day of mourning. We do expect to hear from President Bush this evening, and uh, also an update from Mayor Giuliani shortly too, and just how the city is dealing with this and where we stand. And again, we really don't have any casualty figures. Maybe roughly two or three thousand that we know of have been treated for their injuries, but as far as the dead, uh, maybe four or five confirmed at this point. But that figure obviously will be going much much higher. Let's go live to Ten Ten Winds reporter Al Jones. And Ralph, uh, you know, Sandy mentioned the trauma that some of these police and firefighters are going to have to deal with. You know, these are people that deal with uh, tragedy, you know, on a daily, on a weekly basis. So it takes a lot to stun them. Uh, but uh, one of the officers was telling me that uh, around the uh, the complex uh, early on in the uh, in the disaster response, uh, there were people lying in the street, uh, bleeding, critically hurt, being treated. There were body bags being zipped up and laid on those same streets, filled body bags. And these are things that he's going to uh, have a tough time living with. Sergeant Moses Cruz with the 1st Precinct was one of the first on the scene right before the building started to crumble. Uh, the immediate reaction was control panic, you could say, and it's kind of, all the officers, we all tried to get to the right to run, so we felt a big cloud of ash and dust coming at us. People pretty much ran. I mean, yeah. usually when you run, they're going to run. Everybody, we didn't show everybody run, and they saw what was coming at them, so they just kept on going off and on. A crew says when he looks down the street from the precinct and no longer sees the twin towers that had pretty much taken up the uh, landscape for years, he's shocked and admits that he's even a bit angry. And I think that's the way most people feel down here is uh, they're still shocked that something like this could happen, so that these uh, two monuments could be just gone. But at the same time, they're starting to get very angry, angry that something like this could happen and uh, happen to so many people. Ralph? Well, Al, there's a point there, too. I mean, those obviously are very symbolic, the twin towers, symbolic in terms of power and commerce and New York and United States, and that's the reason they were the targets. Now, you think about it, too. It's, our, it's the financial stability, kind of the, the rock of uh, lower Manhattan. You have these two uh, anchors, if you will, of uh, financial uh, prosperity for the U.S. and the end of Manhattan, and now they're gone. They are gone, and unfortunately, so are a lot of lies with that. That's 1010 Winds reporter Al Jones, and, uh, and as Al had stories before, and we're hearing from other reporters about people jumping from windows, and uh, Al talked about the people in the streets and what firefighters are facing and police officers and some of those officers will be finding out about colleagues who died during the rescue effort as well. Live continuing coverage right here on 1010 Winds and uh, uh, we should also point out that still some flames, the last we knew anyway inside the Twin Towers, at least some parts of them and also uh, building number 7 in that complex has been on fire in danger of collapsing and we're also said that build, told that building number 5 might also be on fire too that's not confirmed but also gas might be feeding the fire at World Trade Center number 7. Let's get to 1010 Winds Senior Correspondent Stan Brooks. Stan? Yeah, I'm in, Ch in Chatham Square, Ralph. I'm standing on a corner watching clouds of smoke blot out the sun, smoke from the smoldering remains of what once were the Twin Towers. And people here just staring in disbelief. Everybody walking by and chatting about it and saying, I can't believe it. This man I found leaning against the car earlier, a woman by his side, she looked like she was stunned, unable to speak and in a severe state of shock. I asked him what happened and where he was. I caught an explosion and uh, just got consumed by the smoke and the debris. And it turned everything like night over there. You couldn't see where you were going. And um, we're coming down like maybe about three blocks away from the World Trade Center. And there's like continuous explosions going on over there. They're huh. all covered in white. It wasn't for an office building. I don't know if I'd be standing here right now talking to you because that's the only place we found some type of safe haven. And people were generous, and they gave us water. And we broke on a city bus to stay on here first. But then we couldn't breathe inside because the smoke is like it's taking all the oxygen out of the air. You know? And I pray to God that the people that were around us at the time, it was like we're standing here right now, clear as day, and we heard an explosion. And what was it, five seconds later? The smoke just consumed everything. And you couldn't even run. So sometimes you have to experience something to realize what other people experience. And you hear about tragedies all the time on the news and TV. You know, this is some terrorist act. We got to do something. That's what a lot of people.
people are saying as they sit and wonder about this thing and watch in awe, sort of dumbstruck by the fact that the World Trade Center towers could be knocked down by two planes filled with bombs or whatever they were and, and just destroyed and lives with it. Uh, it's an incredible thing to try to comprehend, and people are getting angry as they get over the shock. And, st oh. and Stan, uh, 1010 Winds reporter Stan Brooks, and I think people will be angrier and sadder once we start finding out the magnitude of this, how many people died, is something we simply don't know at this time. Here's an update now from the 1010 Winds newsroom. Besides the World Trade Center, as we've been reporting, uh, part of the Pentagon was hit with a, a plane as well. Here's an update on what happened there, and here's Doug O'Brien. It's believed, Ralph, that about 100 people were killed or injured this morning when an American Airlines jet, a hijack jet, crashed into the Pentagon, apparently intentionally. Rescue workers have begun bringing victims out of the west side of the building now. That's where the crash occurred. The fire there apparently under control. Ralph? All right, Doug O'Brien there, and we'll be hearing more from the mayor shortly, too, and further update on just where we stand as far as the city. Later tonight, we expect to hear from President Bush. We also heard the governor's uh, activated the National Guard and is putting all the state agencies at the liberty of the city to give us support. Connecticut National Guard on standby in case they're needed here. Just thousands of people involved in the rescue effort. And uh, just to recap, there were two planes, both hijacked, slamming into the World Trade Center about eight hours ago. Another one hit part of the Pentagon, as Doug O'Brien was just telling us, and a fourth plane also hijacked. Jack with passengers aboard crash southeast of Pittsburgh. There's been speculation or some reports that this was also, that plane was to be used to hit something like perhaps Camp David or something. We don't know at this point. But four planes hijacked with people aboard and used as terror instruments today, causing death and huge destruction. Now, let's find out where we stand on travel. Winds news time 521 on this terrible uh, Tuesday and afternoon of, if we still try to deal with the tragedy. And here's Matt Ward. As you've been hearing, all the airports are closed around the nation and probably until at least noon tomorrow. We've had other uh, mass transit difficulties around the area. New Jersey Transit outbound Hoboken Terminal operating on a load-and-go basis. No inbound service. And also out of Newark's Penn Station, limited service on the Northeast Carter and North Jersey uh, coastlines and the Raritan line as well. And limited service from Penn Station in New York and the Penn Station in Newark. And no service into the city on New Jersey Transit. Also, New Jersey Transit operating on a load-and-go basis out of New York's Penn Station for service on the Northeast Carter to Trenton. The North Jersey coastline to Long Branch and Bayhead and Midtown direct service to uh, Dover. Meanwhile, the uh, limited service continues out of town along on the railroad and on Metro North trains. Bridges and tunnels have been affected. Tappan Zee has been open all day. Very crowded coming back into Westchester County as I watch it live. The George Washington Bridge is closed down except for the upper level getting back to Jersey. That is open. The Hudson River tunnels closed both ways. Throsneck and Whitestone are open, but the Triborough is closed to Manhattan. Midtown Tunnel Queensboro Bridge closed into Manhattan, but open getting back to Queens, and the Brooklyn-Manhattan-Williamsburg Bridges and Battery Tunnel remain closed in each direction. So is the Verrazano getting to Brooklyn, and the Staten Island Bridges heading uh, to Staten Island are also shut down, but open getting back over to New Jersey. Ralph? All right, that is Matt Ward with an update on the travel situation. He'll be back every 10 minutes as we have been doing in 1010 Winds live coverage on the terrible terror attack today. It does appear that building number 7 has just collapsed. We've been telling you that that building was on fire. Building number 7 at the trade complex has now apparently collapsed. There also have reports that building number 5 might be on fire too. But now a huge amount of smoke and debris now up in that area again because of this building number 7 going down. Uh, Governor P George Pataki on the line with us once again. And Governor Pataki, what's the latest information you've got for us? Well, we're, New Yorkers are pulling together to respond to this emergency, and I just was thanking people who are donating blood at Cabrini Hospital, but uh, over the course of the next few days, we're going to need more help, and we've established two uh, hotlines for people who want to volunteer their services. Nurses, EMTs, emergency service personnel, they can call 1-800-628-0193. Now, I want to stress that right now, everything is being done. We have police, fire, emergency services, uh, at the scene, but over the course of the next few days, people are going to need relief, and that's why we want people who are prepared to volunteer to sign up so that we can call them on a rotating basis as they might be needed. Uh, Governor Pataki, what are you hearing about casualties? Uh, obviously, it's a horrendous, horrendous uh, situation, but uh, we don't want to speculate on numbers. We're just going to continue to try to do everything we can to protect and save as many lives as possible. It would seem that hundreds, if not thousands of people may have died? I don't want to speculate. We're, we're just going to do everything we can to try to save lives, and uh, this is still a crisis, and uh, there's still a very real effort underway to save lives, and that's got to continue and take priority. 
And uh, also, we've just reported that building number seven went down, so this is still a very active, dangerous situation. There are still very active uh, fires and, and problems in lower Manhattan. It is still very dangerous. Everybody should stay out of lower Manhattan except those emergency services that have been pressed into duty. As this seeps in, the terror side of it and the magnitude of it, what are you thinking? It's an enormous catastrophe, but New Yorkers are not going to let terrorists take away our freedom. We will get through this. This is an enormously difficult time, and we have to make sure we say our prayers for the victims and their families and try to save lives, but we will get through this. And I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but there's going to be an enormous a lot of work to be going on in Lower yes. Manhattan. In fact, I've got to run do some work right now. Governor we've Protect. got, we've got uh, great teamwork. Uh, the city's in the lead, and the, the state and federal officials are doing everything we can to be supportive. Once again, we thank you, Governor. Thank you. Governor George Fataki, uh, Al Jones just saw building number seven go down at the World Trade Center. It's collapsed, Al? Hey, you know, we've seen so much today uh, with the collapse of uh, number one and number two. Folks standing here on the corner of Leonard Street and West Broadway, we were just sitting here watching all the smoke pouring up from uh, number seven. Number seven is the kind of reddish-brown building that's uh, towards the north end of the complex. And uh, although we really couldn't see much damage on it, there was smoke pouring out of it here for hours. And uh, folks just kind of standing around, milling about it. And then I wasn't watching. Uh, I just could tell from the reaction of the crowd what had happened because I'd heard it already before. The gasp, the screams, people immediately turning and starting to run, even though we're probably a dozen blocks from the, the center itself, people starting to run away from the scene. And I turned in time to see uh, what looked like a, a skyscraper implosion. It looked like it had been done by a demolition crew. The whole thing just collapsing down on itself and another big, huge plume of uh, gray and white smoke shooting up into the air. And then uh, more of the smoke billowing up the street here. So uh, that's number one, number two, and now number seven that have come down from this explosion, and uh, folks just simply can't believe it. Well, Al, uh, I, I didn't realize because the other towers are so big, but f uh, number seven is 47 story. That was a huge building in its own right. Right. And it was always it was the one that kind of uh, was dwarfed by the other two. It was kind of a reddish brown, and it uh, more or less ran east and west. It was a long, thin building, but uh, uh, it had been damaged, and it had been on fire for hours, uh, and the smoke just seemed to intensify. Um, but we really couldn't see a lot of damage from uh, this angle, from the north side of the uh, structures. Um, that's why everybody was so surprised when all of a sudden it just, it just fell. Hmm. Now, the other thing, too, I would presume because it has been burning for some time, as you indicated, there was nobody inside, and right, we hope no danger anybody when it went down. Well, that's, that's, you know, that's the thing, is that uh, when number, uh, number two went down, you know, I, I don't think, and I know I, I'll put myself in that group, I never thought these things would fall down. I mean, we, we were watching them. You could see them burning. Uh, a lot of it was damaged. There was fire coming out of the top, but I just never for the life of me thought that these huge buildings that have been here so long would actually just fall. Uh, and, that's, and that's what happened. They, they, just, they just crumbled. Well, you know, as reporters, you kind of run to the scene, and that's what happened with some of the firefighters and police, too. They ran to the scene, and, of course, with devastating results. And that's what the, the thing is, with all the triage that's been set up around that area and all the, uh, all the people that were being treated and all the emergency personnel that are close to it, uh, you only hope that they were far enough back so that when this came down that they were all out of harm's way. Because, as you suggested, we never thought they would go down. No, it, it, the, the, the gasp from the crowd here was, uh, was all you needed to know that this, this just shocked everybody again. That is 1010 Winds reporter Al Jones with the news and giving us that description of uh, World Trade Center building number 7 going down, a 47-story building. That, too, is gone. Now, let's go live to 1010 Winds reporter Glenn Chuck. Glenn? About five minutes from now, Mayor Giuliani is going to come here to a command center that's been set up again. We've been saying that they're not giving out the location for obvious reasons. They want the mayor and uh, the governor and whoever else may attend to be safe. He'll have an update. As I said, he'll, I'm told he's going to talk about the latest number of wounded, the ongoing rescue effort, as you've heard on 1010 Winds. The mayor also uh, trying to be the emotional strength route for millions of people. He really looked uh, very upset earlier today, obviously, for uh, all of the afternoon. He's just been shattered by this. He's trying to keep himself together. He's, he's doing that. He's praised New Yorkers for being calm during the nightmare this morning he's asked for their prayers and again and just uh, we're told now by the mayor's people as i'm standing here about two or three minutes from now we're expected to have an update on all this uh, critical information so you'll have it here on 1010 wins Rob. all right glenn shock and of course a touch of irony in this very day that this happened uh, there was to be a primary to uh, decide who might be replacing mayor giuliani as a mayor or rudy giuliani as a mayor of new york that primary of course has been canceled some folks may have voted before it was canceled and have to work out all the details on that important we just got this new york city police ordering an evacuation of all buildings south of canal street to lower manhattan all buildings south of canal evacuated ordered evacuated by the new york city police department winds news time 529 live continuing coverage here of the awful tragedy today and uh, we're going live to 1010 winds reporter julia papa and I think we lost Juliet there. We'll see if we can reestablish that. Oh, 
Let's go to 1010 Winds reporter Eileen LaPalm. Eileen? All right, Ralph, I'm here on Hudson Street, as, you, as you've been hearing, that Seven World Trade Center just collapsed about five minutes ago. Suddenly we saw officers, all tons and tons of, uh, maybe 100 officers, police officers, running north, running along Hudson Street, telling people to move, get out of the way. The, again, the smoke was billowing north, and people were running. I'm here with an emergency worker. He's a first-year NYU medical student. He was down there. He was trying to help people. His name is Daryl. Yeah, um, so I was just standing there, uh, you know, we were watching the building, actually, because it was on fire. The uh, the bottom floors of the, of the building were on fire. And, uh, you know, we heard this this sound that sounded like a clap of thunder. Turned around, we were shocked to see that the building was, uh, uh, well, it looked like there was um, a shock wave uh, ripping through the building. And the windows all uh, busted out. And, you know, it was, it was horrifying. And then, uh, you know, about a second later, the bottom floor caves out. And uh, the building followed after that, and um, we saw the building crash down all the way to the ground. Um, you know, we were in shock. And then, uh, then the worst part about it, we saw the, the smoke and the plumes of smoke coming after us, and we had to run. Uh, we had to run north, actually, on um, on that street. We just ran north to, to escape from the smoke, and uh, luckily we weren't hurt. But uh, it was certainly very, very scary. Um, yeah, so that was that was about it. Okay, and Daryl and his friend, they are NYU medical students. They are going to go back and help with the emergency situation again. Eileen Palmer, 1010 Winds, live on Hudson Street. And we'll be going back to Eileen and all reporters all standing by with further updates for us in this terrible tragedy that happened eight and a half hours ago when two planes... They were both hijacked passenger planes with passengers aboard and the crews slammed into the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center, another one hitting the part of the Pentagon, and a fourth going down in western Pennsylvania. Four hijacked commercial planes loaded with people. Well, not actually loaded, but with passengers aboard. Just going to repeat this. New York City Police Department ordering an evacuation of all buildings south of Canal Street to Lower Manhattan. If you just joined us, building number seven, a 47-story building just went down. That had been damaged, too, by the fire and uh, the debris today. Now, let's get an update on travel once again. Again, it's a big story in Lower Manhattan and elsewhere, and here's Matt Ward. Oh, going to have a very strange day, too, as we look around with our jam can network. The Long Island Expressway out to the fairgrounds actually a pretty light traffic into that spot, but uh, some other roads are jam-packed. 17 South coming down to Route 3, very crowded. A lot of traffic is stuck on Route 3 heading eastbound side. They've got that closed off coming down towards the Meadowlands area. A lot of the eastbound roads in New Jersey heading down towards the Hudson River crossings are closed off because the only thing across the Hudson that's getting by, other than the Tappan Zee, which has been open all day, is the George Washington Bridge upper level leaving town that is open but all the rest of those Hudson River crossings have been uh, closed off and it looks like the outbound Lincoln Tunnel now has one lane open however cars are being searched before going through the uh, Lincoln Tunnel so this is a uh, quite an event indeed meanwhile if you're trying to cross the East River can do it Brooklyn Bridge Manhattan Williamsburg or the Battery Tunnel a lot of pedestrians have been uh, walking across the uh, Williamsburg Bridge and the Manhattan Bridges heading back over uh, to Brooklyn and the traffic on the Midtown Tunnel and Queensboro Bridge is uh, open to Queens, but closed coming into Manhattan. Triborough Bridge is still shut down into Manhattan, but the Thrage Neck and the Whitestone are open in each direction. As far as trains go, Jersey Transit operating on a load-and-go basis out of Penn Station. Northeast Carter, North Jersey Coast, Midtown Direct and Raritan Line. Long Island Railroad, limited service out of the city. Same deal with Metro North. And, of course, those flights are not running at all around the United States, probably until noon tomorrow. Ralph? All right, Matt Ward and more troubles here brought on by the explosions at the World Trade Center. We told you a short time ago there was a fire at Seven World Trade Center, and that building is now pretty much collapsed and destroyed, a 47-story building. Now, Con Ed says because of the fire at Seven World Trade Center, electricity has been lost to a significant portion of lower Manhattan, uh, bordered by Thomas Street in the north, Broadway in the east, Hutton River on the west, down to the southern tip of Manhattan. So lower Manhattan section pretty much without power right now. The company assessing damage and exploring service restoration, it says... Uh, added to that, uh, that the New York City Police Department had already ordered evacuation of all buildings south of Canal Street to lower Manhattan. Uh, Terry Sheridan has been on duty at St. Vincent's Hospital. A lot of the people injured were rushed there. What's the latest, Terry? Well, the number is still holding steady at 297, but I can tell you in the past half hour since I spoke to you, there are at least as five or six ambulances unloading victims at any time, and they're in and they're out. And since number seven went down, there seems to be a sense of urgency more among the workers, among the cops. Um, it's just as all, you know, as if it wasn't intense enough, it just got a whole lot more.
more intensive. The latest numbers, again, that we have is 297 have been brought to St. Vincent's. Others have been brought to the St. Vincent's hospitals in Brooklyn, Queens, and Staten Island uh, via the Staten Island Ferry to those who had to go to Staten Island. Uh, they have also set up a mental health hotline for anyone, whether you're a, a rescue worker, whether you're, you think that you've lost someone, that you can call and speak to a counselor, which is 212-604-8220. If you think that some, someone that you know or one of your loved ones is here at St. Vincent's, they are urging you not to come to the hospital. If you are in Manhattan, you can go to the new school, which is on uh, 12th Street, just off 5th Avenue, or you can uh, give them a call at 212-604-7285. Terry Sheridan, 1010 wins at St. Vincent's Hospital. Uh, Terry, I just want to ask, though, too, as you pointed out, some of the first people arriving were, were the people who were outside, so now we're seeing some of the more severely injured people coming in. That, that, is, that is true. With the, with the first people that I was told who arrived were the people who were outside or people who went in, such as the, the police and fire department, the ones suffering the eye injuries, the ones suffering uh, the dust and smoke inhalation. But um, now, again, from what I'm seeing uh, from my vantage point, um, before they were coming in for the most part, they were walking in or they were climbing out of an ambulance and getting into a wheelchair and being wheeled in. Now we're seeing the, the stretchers being put to use. All right. It's going to be a long, uh, unfortunately grim story, too. We do expect an update from the mayor before long to give us some indication of where we stand as far as the rescue effort and perhaps some indication of casualties. You may have heard me. I was talking to Governor Pataki just a couple of minutes ago, and he's not giving any speculation about what kind of toll there might be. That's something we'll be finding out as we go along. And uh, President Bush will be addressing the nation later tonight as well. We don't have a time yet on that, but the president has put the military on high alert. Embassies have been notified around the world to be careful. Too. Now, 1010 Winds reporter Carol Dioria is uh, on the Brooklyn side of the Brooklyn Bridge, I believe. That's right, Ralph. And, you know, so many hours after this terrorist attack, people are still walking off the uh, Brooklyn and Manhattan Bridge. They're walking over. And here on the Brooklyn side, there's a very heavy police presence on Tillery Street in Brooklyn. That's the, the foot of the bridges. Deputy Inspector Rocco Benedetto said the police just want to make sure everyone can walk across that bridge very safely. We have two temporary shelters established, one in George Washingtonhouse High School and one in New York City Technical College. We have a triage set up. We're administering first aid. Fortunately, there have been no serious incidents to report. I should also point out that right at this location, there are city buses here. In fact, they are taking some folks back to Manhattan. In other words, these were people who live in Manhattan, but when uh, the, the disaster took place, they were evacuated to Brooklyn. And now, finally, they're being allowed back to Manhattan. But certainly, they're not being allowed to go to lower Manhattan. They are being taken by bus to other parts of Manhattan. Carol DiOri, a 10 wins in Brooklyn. As a matter of fact, as I mentioned, but I'll repeat, New York City police have ordered an evacuation of all buildings south of Canal Street to lower Manhattan. And there's now a major power outage in lower Manhattan as well because of that fire at 7 World Trade Center. And if you missed that, that building has now collapsed, as well as the two Twin Towers. So three buildings gone there. And there have been a report of a fire in the num- building number 5, but that's uh, unclear at this point. That's not been confirmed. A lot, a lot to tell you about here in this day of terrible tragedy. The terrorist attacks here in New York and in, uh, at the Pentagon and uh, across the river from Washington... Let's get some more now on some of the things that have uh, changed. And here's uh, Larry Cantor. Well, I have a lot of phone numbers for you. I'll pass those along in just a moment. First, uh, Carol was talking about people from Manhattan who work out in Queens or even further out on Long Island. The American Red Cross is opening up four shelters on Long Island for people who work there but live in Manhattan and can't get back home. Here are those shelter locations. Nassau Community College Gymnasium at One Education Drive in Garden City. Long Island University CW Post Campus at the Interfaith Chapel. That's 720 Northern Boulevard in Brookville. Southside Senior High School at 140 Shepherd Street in Rockville Center. And Plain Edge High School at Wingate and Peony Drives in North Massapequa. Blood donations, if you can, please donate blood, especially type O negative. You can call these numbers to find the uh, donation spot closest to you. 1-800-HELP-NOW. That's the American Red Cross. 800-HELP-NOW. And the New York Blood Center, 800-933-BLOOD. 933-BLOOD. Now, for employees and their families of who work down in the World Trade Center area, some of the companies have uh, set up 
Uh, Toll-free numbers. Aon Company was based at the World Trade Center, and they have a survivor hotline, 866-256-4154. 866-256-4154. Morgan Stanley, 888-883-4391. That's 888-883-4391. Deloitte Touche, 888 243-7666 888-243-7666 The Pentagon has a toll-free number for families and relatives. It's 877-663-6772. 877-663-6772. United Airlines for information, 800-932-8555. 800-932-8555. And, of course, American Airlines, 800 800- Two four five zero nine nine nine. That's eight hundred two four five zero nine 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 for employees and their families, and in the case of the two airlines, for passengers and relatives to call those numbers for information. Ralph, and we're hoping to get more information from the mayor as far as what the Hollow City is doing, and perhaps some indication of the number of people who may have died and have been injured. That was Larry Cantor reporting there. We'll be back with Larry too, and also coming up, Doug O'Brien will be with us too, giving us an update on some of the national and international ramifications of this, in addition to the fact that part of the Pentagon was damaged there, and there are a lot of casualties at the Pentagon today when one of the uh, four hijacked planes slammed into a part of the Pentagon. Now, just to recap, uh, live continuing coverage here was uh, almost uh, almost nine hours ago now that a plane, a hijacked plane, slammed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center, then a second hijacked plane slammed into the other tower, huge gaping holes, billowing smoke and flames, people killed and injured, some people People escaping from the building, and then the buildings collapse. Some people still inside. Some rescuers down below treating people were hit by the falling debris. And then... Um then the uh, word that the uh, another hijacked plane had hit the Pentagon, causing casualties there, and a fourth plane was also hijacked, and uh, that plane crashed in uh, Pennsylvania about 80 miles southeast of uh, Pittsburgh. And that plane was Flight 93, a United plane flying from Newark, from Newark to San Francisco. Now, about travel conditions, we still have a lot of problems related to the terror attack today, and here's uh, Matt Ward. And if you're riding on the Bell Parkway, the westbound side is closed near Kennedy Airport with police investigation work going on. Traffic is being diverted to uh, service road in that spot. The ride is also very busy on many of the other area roads. FDR Drive has been closed. Battery Park underpass up towards the United Nations. Brooklyn, Manhattan, Williamsburg Bridge, Battery Tunnel remain closed down. Queensboro Bridge and Midtown Tunnel are open going back to Queens, but closed into Manhattan. Thrysneck and Whitestone are open either way, but the Traboro Bridge is closed into Manhattan and across the Hudson. Upper level George Washington Bridge is open getting back to New Jersey, and we had word that they were letting one lane of traffic leave town via the Lincoln Tunnel after uh, doing a search of uh, vehicles heading into the Lincoln Tunnel. Meanwhile, while as we uh, check up on the 1010 Winds Transit Desk, a New Jersey Transit operating on a load-and-go basis out of Penn Station, Northeast Carter, North Jersey Coastline, Midtown Direct, and also the uh, Staten Island Ferry running outbound service. Now there's also ferry service available from Pier 11 Wall Street, West 38th Street, East 34th Street, and Pier A Battery Park to New Jersey, Brooklyn, and Queens. Just limited service leaving town on Metro North and along on the railroad. And on the trains, uh, some of the subway diversions, A trains are running between 207th and to Far Rockaway, but bypassing Chambers Street, B train are running from 34th Street through 6th Avenue to 145th Street, and the D's are running 205th through 34th and 6th Avenue. Lots of other subway diversions, too. Just going to be one of those kind of evenings, and of course, the airports remain closed until midday tomorrow nationwide. I'm Matt Ward, Shadow Traffic on 1010 WAN. An incredible story, a horrible story, and one is still unfolding. We do expect updates before long and just where we stand as far as the rescue effort and what the casualty indications might be, but we might have an indication by way of 1010 WAN's reporter Steve Kastenbaum, because he He's been talking to uh, one of the rescuers, Steve. Well, I've been uh, talking to many of the rescue workers who have, uh, some of them, walked out of the uh, the area, the disaster area around the World Trade Center. Some of the firefighters saying uh, that they never even had an opportunity to get inside the burning uh, Twin Towers. And then number seven uh, was on fire and the subsequent uh, rubble all over the area. Uh, folks here saying that uh, the patients they were able to get to earlier on following the uh, two crashes of the airplanes into the World Trade Center were uh, treated 
stated at uh, hospitals, hundreds of them taken to area hospitals. There were uh, many fatalities as a result of that. But once the rubble started falling from the collapsing buildings, there was absolutely no chance at all for those uh, laying uh, or sitting or standing or walking beneath the buildings. Uh, Roy Anderson uh, has training uh, in emergency medicine, and uh, his instincts sent him running down to the World Trade Center area. But he says there's absolutely more or less nothing for him or anyone else to do right there at this moment. There's no sign of life. There's no... There's going to be bodies coming out, if they can even do that. I mean, there's like a... looks like a Hollywood set. There's The World Trade Center now consists of just some spires going up about 25 feet. That it reminded him of pictures of uh, Europe during World War II, just complete devastation. Lower Manhattan right now resembles a, a, a nuclear winter. As you walk around, there is thick gray soot and debris coating anything and everything you look at. Uh, it's incomprehensible the amount of devastation that has taken place here. Steve Kastenbaum, 1010 Winds, reporting live from Lower Manhattan. Yes, we do have the feeling as time goes on, the story is going to get worse and worse as we find out the magnitude. We already know part of it is, and that is we've lost the Twin Towers. We also lost building number 7, a 47-story building. That collapsed within the last 20 minutes or so. There's a major power outage in Lower Manhattan. As a matter of fact, New York City Police have ordered evacuation of all buildings south of Canal Street in Lower Manhattan right now because of the dangers there. A Beekman Hospital among those losing power because of that outage brought on by the fire in World Trade Building number 7. A 1010 Winds reporter, Juliet Papa. Yes, I'm at Beekman Downtown Hospital, and just about 20 minutes ago, they did lose power. They're now working on emergency generators, and they're making announcements here to make sure that all unnecessary lights are taken off. But uh, they're also telling anybody who wants to come down here for treatment, please come down, uh, make sure that the other hospitals are not overloaded. They are ready, willing, and able. In fact, a lot of the EMTs who had been there earlier to treat people uh, injured from the plane crashing into the building had been subsequently injured from the resulting explosion of the building. This is Michelle March. She works for Metro Tech, and she had come in from Brooklyn. Um, the bosses were in charge. They were putting us into groups to go to different areas to get ready for the patients. Before we knew it, all we heard was a big boom. The building started coming, and all we heard was run. So everybody tried to run. Now, she says she ran, and she has now a fractured uh, left arm. Uh, she came out in a wheelchair, and she had a, uh, an injury on the back of her head. She said you really didn't know what hit you. She wasn't even sure if it was just this sort of ball of debris that was coming down blocks. People, she said, were just trying to outrun it because it just came at you, or whether it was something that just fell on top of her uh, from the building. But she said, you know, she'll be okay. We just saw a firefighter come in a little while ago, a couple of people here that were injured uh, just from the stampede, but the doctors here, they saw about 200 people, uh, several were taken to Cornell uh, Burn Unit, there were severe burns and a lot of uh, fractures, a lot of orthopedic injuries, uh, uh, some people, their legs, their arms just crushed. No, we suddenly lost Juliet there, but obviously get the picture here. There's a lot of pain and suffering from the horrible terrorist attacks today here in New York and at the Pentagon. And uh, we've been talking about the people in the buildings, people coming out. But keep in mind that there were people on those two planes, those two planes who were hijacked and slammed into the Twin Towers. One carried 65 people, the other carried 92 people. Uh, you can almost, and a lot of people are going to be getting some very bad news during the next 24 hours or 48 hours or so when they really find out who is still inside that building, those buildings. They're World Trade Center Twin Towers and uh, the people who did not survive and of course some people have been very badly injured and uh, then you start to think about the businesses and every other person who's been hurt in more direct or indirect ways. A 1010 wins for our senior correspondent Stan Brooks is with us. Stan? I heard you say it a couple of minutes ago Ralph it's going to get worse and worse and it does get worse and worse and it must have been about 20 minutes ago when 7 World Trade Center went down that uh, the thick clouds of smoke got even thicker and darker and sort of blotted out everything and sort of walked it over to the Brooklyn Bridge and sort of blotted some of that out. And then there was a motorcycle escort that ran by and lots of police cars, fire trucks. I guess that was when seven went down. And ironically, that's where the mayor has his bunker, his command center for the Office of Emergency Management. Uh, and at the time that he decided to do it on the 23rd floor of the uh, Seven World Trade Center, there was lots of criticism about establishing a bunker in a uh, tall 
high-rise building 23, 23 floors above ground. Uh, but obviously uh, it isn't anymore. It was not a good place to put it. Uh, but that was where they commanded all the operations during the snowstorms and whatever, and blackouts and whatever problems we had. But that's all gone. And it's an eerie, eerie uh, feeling. And this man who uh, lived across the, lives across the street from where the World Trade Center stood uh, described it uh, quite well. It, it looked like something surreal. It looked like a plane. Well, both of them looked like planes flew into the building, just simply disappeared. They were in the air, and suddenly it was gone. It looked like it, it evaporated. Uh, they both clearly went right into the building. They didn't just crash and break apart. They went into the building. Dozens of people were jumping out of the building. It's the most horrific sight that you can imagine. There were the police and the firemen standing in the street had to, had to bear the, the explosion. It's terrible. It's just... And what makes it even more terrible, Ralph, is the fact that it keeps going on. You know, first you had a plane hit, then you had a second plane hit, then you had one building fall down, then a second building fall down, now a third building fall down. You wonder where it's going to stop, and then you got the reports from Washington on the Pentagon being hit. I mean, it's, it, it, it really is uh, hard to really comprehend all that's been happening and is still happening. I think that the picture is awful to see the pictures of the damage and everything, but it's going to be sinking in more slowly as we do find out the casualty figures. And they're going to be digging all night, and probably by morning they're going to start getting at the bodies of the people who did not survive. I hate to think, but I think we're just beginning to hear the bad news in that regard. But that's 1010 Wind Senior Correspondent Stan Brooks, because the rescuers are just now really able to go inside the building to see what happened. And, of course, some of the people who were injured and able to walk out, those are the ones we've been hearing about and who are being treated. Let's just take a moment before another traffic update to get to Doug O'Brien, because, Doug, you've got the latest on the Pentagon. Stan mentioned that, and of course, the Pentagon, part of it was hit by one of those planes. Yes, Ralph, about 100 people are believed killed or injured in the uh, crash of an American Airlines jet into the west side of the Pentagon this morning, apparently intentionally. In fact, Barbara Olson, a former congressional staffer and Republican Party activist, was on that plane and managed to call her husband twice before the crash occurred. CNN's Kim O'Brien has learned some of the details of that phone conversation. Olson, uh, Barbara Olson, told Ted the following story that uh, all the passengers were herded to the back of the plane, including the flight personnel, including the pilot. And uh, the only weapons she mentioned were knives and cardboard cutters. You would think if there were a machine gun or any other kind of uh, gun that she would have mentioned that. A state of emergency remains in effect in Washington. There are several reports of explosions, none of them confirmed. People are being told to go home and stay there. All highway traffic into the district has been stopped. The same situation, a lot of the area in California. The airports in San Francisco and Los Angeles have closed. All state government in California is shut down, as is city government in San Francisco, along with many of the state's amusements. President Bush is returning to Washington after going from Florida to Louisiana. He's to meet with his top advisors when he arrives and he will address the nation tonight about 9. Ralph? All right, Doug O'Brien, we also expect an update from Mayor Giuliani any time now to give us an indication of just where we stand in the rescue effort. Now, as far as travel, that's a big, big problem in lower Manhattan and elsewhere. A lot of things were sealed off for a while. Here's Matt Ward with the very latest. For all of us. East River, all the lower East River crossings are uh, closed. Brooklyn, Manhattan, Williamsburg Bridges, and the Battery Tunnel, too. Although the at the uh, Manhattan Bridge, uh, people have been walking across the upper level, heading back over to uh, Brooklyn. Meanwhile, the Queensboro Bridge and the Midtown Tunnel still closed into Manhattan, but open, heading back to Queens. And across the Upper East River, the Throsneck and the Whitestone are open each way. But the Triborough Bridge is open only to those heading uh, for the Bronx and Queens that are still closed into Manhattan. Across the Hudson River, George Washington Bridge upper level is open as you uh, leave town, and traffic is uh, blocked off in the right lane up and across that span. And the uh, Lincoln Tunnel, we've been spotting some traffic slowly coming back to the Jersey side, emerging from the tunnel. Apparently, they're narrowing it down to just one lane, leaving town to the Lincoln Tunnel, and they're inspecting those vehicles before they go into the Lincoln Tunnel, heading back to the New Jersey side. Let's check up on mass transit. Of course, the airports are closed around the nation until tomorrow. Jersey Transit operating out of Penn Station on load-and-go bases on Northeast Car to North Jersey Coast and Midtown Direct Metro 
North and LIRR, just limited service out of town. A lot of subway diversions around town as well, especially through Lower Manhattan. And uh, ferry service available from Pier 11 Wall Street, from West 38th, from East 34th, and from Pier A at Battery Park to New Jersey, Brooklyn, and Queens. I'm Matt Ward, Shadow Traffic on 1010 Wins. And it's important to remind you that uh, New York City police have ordered evacuation of all buildings south of Canal Street in Lower Manhattan. If you hadn't got the word, if you hadn't left, if you're still in your office, you should be getting out and getting out of that area of Lower Manhattan. As a result of the fire at Seven World Trade Center, and if in case you missed it, that building has now collapsed. But electric power has been lost to a big part of Lower Manhattan. Uh, from Thomas Street on the north, Broadway in the east, Hudson River in the west, all the way down to the end of uh, Manhattan. So power outage there. And again, evacuation ordered for all buildings south of Canal Street to Lower Manhattan. Live, continuing coverage on 10 and wins the awful tragedy today. The terrorist attacks against the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center and against the Pentagon today. And keep in mind that four planes, commercial planes, were hijacked and used in this terror attack that the people on those planes also died. Wednesday news time 554. A lot of the people who were injured today were taken across the river to hospitals in New Jersey, and one of those hospitals was Jersey City Medical Center, and there, 1010 Winds reporter Sandy Klein. Hey, Ralph. Uh, the first patient arrived after 10 o'clock this morning with... Uh upper body burns, and then after that, they started coming in. Uh, we're waiting for new numbers, but at this point, we were told 100 patients have been admitted to this hospital or being treated at this hospital. No death. Most of the injuries are smoke inhalation, burns, upper body contusions, and the personnel are calling them seriously injured people. Um, there's some very interesting facts going on around here. Uh, right up the block is an armory, and they are setting up beds on a temporary basis because, ironically, the people who have been treated and who have been discharged can't get back into Manhattan. And so they are going to, and it's very possible that they may spend the evening at this armory in Jersey City. And also, interestingly, all the hotels in the area, I have been told, are booked, either with people who um, are trying to get in to see relatives, can't get into New York. York City are coming from some kind of a distance. Uh, one of the administrators at this hospital was uh, calling hotels as far as 45 minutes away. Uh, also, the, year, the Jersey City Medical Center EMS director and 20 ambulances were sent over uh, a short time ago to uh, the scene of this awful tragedy. And in a way, they consider that a good sign because they expect them to be transporting more injured people to uh, this facility. It is just extraordinary how this is all all just sort of come together on this side of the Hudson. And I spoke with the director of social work and case management, who has obviously been counseling people all day. And she said that the toughest, the most traumatized are the fire uh, officers and police who are set off in a separate room in this uh, in this facility. There are about 30 of them who are completely traumatized. They're um, going to have another update uh, in a few minutes from now, another briefing and with new numbers and maybe perhaps this business about a second wave. Uh, this has not been confirmed to me, but there, I have been told that an army hospital is being assembled on, at Liberty State Park and that a temporary morgue is being uh, uh, created on Ellis Island. Uh, that's what the word was for some of these administrators here at Jersey City Medical Center. So as soon as I know more information, I'll bring it on to you from this side of the Hudson. All right, that is Sandy Klein. She's reporting live from the Jersey City Medical Center, just one of the many institutions involved in helping to treat some of the probably thousands of people injured by today's terror attack at the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center. We just got a further update from Con Ed that power outage in Lower Manhattan is actually a larger area than they originally told us, but also the main point is that everybody's told to evacuate south of Canal Street anyway in Lower Manhattan, to evacuate all buildings south of Canal Street. Now, now I'm just realizing there's a lot of residential buildings, too, and they, I'm not sure if that's included or not, but right now, the way the order reads, it's evacuation of all buildings. Now, uh, we do have some closings and other things to uh, related to this terrible tragedy. We're going back to uh, 1010 Winds reporter uh, Larry Cantor. Yeah, and talking about uh, schools for tomorrow, we don't know yet about New York City public schools. However, I don't see any way they could open the ones, at least in lower Manhattan. But we do know about the New York Archdiocese. All of its schools will be closed tomorrow. Spokesman Joseph Zwilling says the school's outside of Manhattan. The Bronx and Staten Island will reopen on Thursday. But he says the schools within the city boroughs might remain closed. He says they'll just take their lead from city emergency officials. The borough of Manhattan Community College on Chambers Street is closed tomorrow. All other CUNY schools will be open.
The Brooklyn Center of Long Island University is canceling classes tomorrow. All non-essential employees at LIU Brooklyn are being told to stay home. St. John's University is canceling all classes tomorrow, and all offices are closed except for essential staff. Ralph? Uh, that's 1010 Wins reporter Larry Cantor. CNN is just reporting there are some explosions in Kabul and Afghanistan, and uh, we're not sure what that all means either. Whether the U.S. perhaps, this is just speculation, perhaps believes that Osama bin Laden was involved in today's terror attacks, and that is the leading suspect, according to officials. Whether there's been some retaliation by the U.S. or not, that's something we don't know. I will tell you this, Donald Rumsfeld, Secretary of Defense, is uh, going to brief us in 10 or 15 minutes. That's the indication anyway. He has something to say. Later on tonight, around 7.30, Attorney John, uh, General John Ashcroft is going to speak to the nation, or at least hold a news briefing. And uh, President Bush is addressing the nation tonight. We don't have a time on that yet. We're also waiting for Mayor Giuliani. In the meantime, uh, to give us an update on where we stand, let's go live once again to 1010 Winds reporter Steve Kastenbaum. Well, uh, Ralph, uh, the scene uh, just continues to uh, it, it really just... Sh- it's, uh, it's, it's unbelievable. I can't even put into words what it looks like down here. I'm on Chambers Street. I'm uh, behind City Hall, and everything below me is just blanketed in smoke from the fires that are still burning in lower Manhattan in and around the World Trade Center. Uh, we are also having trouble now with phone service down here in lower Manhattan, and uh, the problem there is that uh, there are some very important AT&T phone buildings uh, right next to the World Trade Center buildings and right next to number 7, which is the building that just collapsed uh, minutes ago. Uh, that building, uh, by some accounts, uh, I'm told, was being affected by fire. Now, if that building were to go out, uh, some uh, phone employees here tell me all phone service in lower Manhattan would be affected because it all runs through that building. Uh, there are many buildings on fire, I'm told, by people who are down there in that area, smaller buildings that uh, firefighters are just letting burn because they're trying to tend to the larger fires. Also, spoke to some medical personnel who have walked out of the World Trade Center area. Roy Anderson has training uh, in paramedics, and he went down there to see if he could offer some help, but he said uh, most of the wounded and injured people were dealt with earlier this morning. Right now, there's nothing to do. Now, Steve, Everything- we're just going to hold off there. I'm sorry, Steve. Cast and bomb. I'll get right back to you shortly. You're listening to live continuing coverage of the terror attacks at the World Trade Center and at the Pentagon's